so uh, I'm Richard Frog. Uh, I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Radiation Oncology. Uh, the research that we do uh, involves understanding how DNA gets repaired after it's broken. And uh, sort of more importantly, we're interested in how those double strand breaks from DNA uh, are actually repaired either back to itself or uh, uh, formed to uh, uh, other double strand breaks as translocations. Uh, one was with my mom. Uh, she had actually passed away from uh, pancreatic cancer and I ended up taking time off during my undergraduate to take care of her before she passed away. It was clearly a, a challenging time um, and it demanded a lot of uh, personal growth and, and patience. But I was, I was very um, you know, fortunate to have the support of, of many of her co-workers to get me through this transition quickly so I can you know, get back to uh, on my path towards uh, my, my career and figuring out my next steps. Yeah, I guess I touched on it a little bit earlier, but uh, so basically uh, when DNA breaks, uh, most of the time those broken DNA ends that are formed are just simply rejoined with little uh, to no information loss. However, sometimes those ends kind of uncouple during their rejoining and it becomes much more difficult to bring those ends back together again. Now imagine a second DNA break in the same cell that also happens to lose their pairing. In this case, there's a chance a much greater chance uh, to join different ends together, uh, resulting in a translocation. And uh, you know, historically, we would only be able to see those changes when chromosomes condense uh, just before one cell divides into two cells. But uh, with current DNA sequencing technologies, we can resolve precisely down to the single DNA building block where these uh, repair scars occur. Translocating completely different part of the genome into or next to genes can uh, have dramatic changes in their regulation. Uh, however, with, when it comes to cancers, uh, losing or gaining gene functions have immediate impacts with only a small but growing list of genes that, uh, that are known to uh, suppress or promote tumor functions. Um, you know, the simple chromosome acrobatics could involve these large deletions or inversions or, or duplications. Um, uh, but those deleted segments uh, may still be retained as extra chromosomal DNA circles and provide even more genetic diversity across a cancer cell population with respect to sort of gene copy number. Um, this is also further complicated by cancer genome mapping, which shows cancers having many different translocations that all likely contribute to tumor repression to varying degrees. Only some of the many identified cancers are proven to drive cancers. Uh, knowing more about how these different translocations contribute to tumor cell function uh, would provide new approaches for targeting cancers that have these translocations. You know, we don't know which other translocations could drive or support oncogenesis, um, but you know, we can leverage the generation of translocations to better understand DNA repair processes. I mean, that's kind of what we do. Uh, the DNA mutating processes or environmental toxins that cause DNA breaks to form is another aspect. And, um, you know, we can also use this platform to develop novel drugs that sensitize cancers to DNA repair. Uh, and this last part is actually important uh, because uh, these drugs may synergize with radiotherapies uh, to more specifically damage and kill cancer cells while sparing the normal surrounding